Hello, and welcome back to my book review channel. My name is Phoenix, and I'm so glad to have you here today. Today, I'm going to be reading an author that I had recommend, or that I had, I have already reviewed, um, and I enjoyed the book so much, I decided to get two other novels of hers. She does have some young adult books, but I'm not really that keen on young adult, although I will read them occasionally. They're not my general preference. Um, and I probably won't be reviewing a lot on here. I, some, sometimes I read them by accident. That's what happens. I don't realize it's a young adult, so then I read it. So, uh, since I'm already showing it, the, the novel is Young Jay and Young. This is, uh, definitely has a feminist slant to it. Um, it is about slut shaming. It's kind of the, the ultimate kind of takeaway, in my opinion. It's women's stories, redemption stories. Um, and, and just like her previous book, it is told for the most part with a lot of humor. Um, there, but it's also very sharp edged. There are some characters in here that um, not only do they get what they deserve, they are shown for what they are. I, I, um, I, I thought it was really compelling because it's not, she is making points but I felt like she was true and fair to showing both sides of things because affairs don't happen in vacuum. So let's get to it. So we open, I have one criticism of the book. So we open with Rachel Grossman Shapiro and she is an older lady and she is trying out the, oh, what's it called? The dating app, swipe left, swipe right. You know what I mean. Um, she lives in Florida and she's going on dates because she's newly divorced. She's a lovely Jewish lady. And she's very tough, lovable. And, and so here, my real only complaint about this story is that we get such a small amount of time with that woman. And I adored her from the get-go. She was very funny and I wanted to hear more from her voice. Um, in her chapter, we learn about her daughter, Aviva Grossman and Senator Levin's affair. Um, her daughter kind of revealed what was going on to her in drips and drabs. Um, Rachel takes steps to try and help get her out of it to no avail. And then the sky falls and everybody's kind of aware of what's going on, unfortunately. Um, so, like I said, we don't get a whole lot of Rachel Grossman um, we just get a little snippet in my opinion. Then we meet Jane Young, who is a former roommate of Ava Grossman. She has moved to Maine and become an event planner. And she has an eerily similar life to Aviva Grossman. She has a daughter, so she is a single mother. And I think, I don't know if I mentioned, she's an event planner. And her chapter is really interesting because or her chapters are interesting because we see, she's an event planner, but she primarily does weddings. And we see how adept she is at handling people, how she has learned a lot about the people in the town, how people tell her their secrets. Um, so she's very integral in the town. She, um, she goes on a date with someone and finds out he's married and is just very put off by that. Um, so it, uh, I enjoyed her as a character. I liked her a lot. Um, we get to see firsthand. I mean, she does kind of talk about it, graze over how the how she learns these secrets. But then we meet um, a young bride who comes into the shop, and then her husband who comes in, or future husband, groom to be, um, comes into the office, and you kind of get the feeling that things aren't quite right. But he's in politics, and he's kind of you know, I don't know, thinks about perceptions a lot. So, you know, you, you don't like the guy, like just, just the way he treats his fiance and, and uh, Jane is very adept at handling both of them. And it's really uh, interesting. Now, we also meet Ruby Young, who is Jane's daughter. And Ruby has a tough time at school. She's getting bullied mercilessly. Um, but she's a really precocious, independent, um, unique character. She helps her mom with the business. So she's a, a, like a mini adult in some ways. So you can kind of see her, you know, asserting herself 
and and knowing her own value in some ways. It's really enchanting to see. Um, but she gets the the school pro the school starts a pen pal program and so she has a pen pal named Fatima in Indonesia and this is how we learn a lot about Ruby um, she starts revealing things to Fatima because at one point her teacher says I'm not going to read your stories anymore but you can, or your letters anymore but you can continue their emails um, I don't know why I did that whatever um, and uh, one one thing we I don't like so I don't want to give anything away but something happens Ruby finds something out that she is not happy about and she makes a decision and she's going to just go do her thing and do what she wants to do. Number one, she has the funds because she works for her mom. Number two, she knows how to do things. So she's like able to book her own flights, get her own lifts. Like, I think she's like eight. I, I'm sorry. I should have written that down before I started. But um, this precocious young girl is taking care of business and living her life. Um, then we meet M. Beth Levin, who is the wife of the senator that had the affair with Aviva Grossman. So it all circles around Aviva Grossman. Oh, and I forgot to mention, at some point during Ruby's part of the novel, Jane Young decides to run for mayor of, I think it's Allison, what is, it's Alice, Sir Allison... I don't know. That's the name of their town in Maine. And so then Embeth Levin comes in and I found her chapters very interesting because of course, like she's the wronged woman and how does she really feel about everything? And she stood by her man. And like, even from Rachel Grossman's chapter, like we get this perception of her, I... I don't know what's up with me in air quotes today. Um, you just get this picture of her and she doesn't seem like the happiest woman. Um, women don't seem to like her. Um, and she, uh, I thought it was interesting because she is suffering from cancer. And so I was wondering like, well, is this supposed to make me more empathetic to her? But like, of course it does. Like she's suffering through cancer. Nobody deserves to go through that. And and also, like, nobody deserves to be cheated on. And, and just because you stay with somebody doesn't mean... And I just... All the perceptions that we have about, like, a situation that none of us are involved in. But, like, we start judging when we know that somebody's had an affair, especially an elected official. Because, of course, they're supposed to be the best of the best, right? They're supposed to hold themselves to a high standard. Because if they don't hold themselves to a high standard, then how do we know that they're going to hold themselves to a high standard for us? So, and I'm not saying that that's wrong. I do think that like we should be electing people who hold themselves to a high standard. However, people are human, you know, and they make mistakes. So anyway, I'm getting a little sidetracked here. Sorry, but I, her story is so interesting because she genuinely loves her husband. That's all there is to it. Like she genuinely loves him. And I, she has she makes no apologies about it and she's okay with the way things are in in her chapter they're about to celebrate their 30th wedding anniversary and she knows how it's gonna go she doesn't want a big party but he wants a big party so they arrange this big party and he's not there well i guess i probably shouldn't tell you that but like the she knows how it's gonna turn out and it turns out that way and it's still fine. She's happy with her life. So who is anybody to judge her for how she chooses to live her life and what makes her happy, you know? So I enjoyed that. And then finally we meet young Aviva Grossman. Now, unfortunately for Aviva, when she met Senator Levin, I mean, she knew him because they were neighbors when she, when she was a young girl. And, but when she met him, she was an intern working in his election. I messed, I left all that out, but she was an intern. She was interested in political science. She wanted to run for office herself. Um, so, but a thing called the internet came out and a blog, there was, a, there was a, you know, this new thing called a blog. And so she started keeping a blog 
of her scenario, like, and just coincidentally started adding details about like her sexual experience with a senator, but not using her name and not thinking anybody would ever know it. And the way that everybody found out about it was just happenstance and, you know, but it was a very accurate portrayal because like, Senator Levin does not come off as a good guy, but he never lied to her. She was just young and she didn't know how to read signs for like, oh, this guy's not serious about me. This is never going to happen. And I think that it's a part of, part of everyone's growing up that, you know, you put yourself out there for somebody and that's how you learn when they don't return your affection. Oh, I shouldn't do that because that's not going to get me the results I want. I should learn to pay attention to what somebody puts into me. And we all have to learn that. It's unfortunate for people that sometimes they choose a partner or a person who is not, who is number one in the spotlight and number two, never going to give them that. And it has to become this huge ordeal for them and life changing and life shattering. And so it had a really big effect on Aviva's life. She wasn't able to get jobs in her field. She wasn't able to move on with her life. She was, she got a couple of hits and she was really excited about one and then they Googled her and they found out what she'd done and like, like it's anybody's business, but at the same time, optics, like they couldn't hire her. So it's, um, you know, I thought it was really interesting. I mean, in this world today where people are trying to dox other people and certainly we all make mistakes and that doesn't mean that people don't have to take their lumps, but was it really, I, I, I really thought this was an interesting book. It was well written. It's funny. It's edgy. Um, I highly recommend it. Uh, if you like this type of novel, um, I think you will enjoy it. So yeah, thank you. I, I, that's about all I really had to say about it today. So Thank you for joining me. If you like it or if you have anything else to add, if I miss something, let me know in the comments. So great to have you here today and I'll be back again next week. Take care.